Welcome, age of vintage society. In a time when film censorship was rampant, Jane Mansfield loved to push the limits of decency. Making great use of her buxom figure, Mansfield was not only a well-known actress, but she was also one of the most vivacious sex symbols of her age, until it all ended in one of the most shocking tragedies Hollywood had ever seen. Why was Jane Mansfield's extremely high IQ overshadowed by her image? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. It's not too hard to see why Jane Mansfield and Marilyn Monroe did manage to get confused for one another now and again, thanks to their looks and their fame, since they were similar from a distance. But upon looking closely, it was easy to tell them apart, despite the fact that both women were quite beautiful and both of them knew how to attract a crowd. Jane, however, was still a rather tragic case that started out great when she hit her stride, and was increasingly popular in the 50s. By the 60s, however, her career was starting down a decline that she couldn't stop, and in 1967, things came to an absolute halt with her accidental death. Her daughter, Mariska, was in the car at the same time her mother was killed, but being only three years old, doesn't remember what happened. A career cut this short is usually a tragedy, and it was no different here. She is often remembered for her signature platinum blonde look and flirtatious personality, but Hollywood star Jane Mansfield was much more than just a pretty face. She was highly intelligent, she had a shrewd business acumen, and she knew exactly how to build a public personality. Vera Jane Palmer was born on April 19, 1933, in Phillipsburg, New Jersey. She was the only child of Vera J. Nee Palmer, later Piers, and Herbert W. Palmer. Her parents were well-to-do, with her father a successful attorney in the city, where she spent a portion of her childhood. Her parents were both born with the same surname, and her ancestry was seven-eighths English and Cornish and one-eighth German. She was reportedly a talented pianist and played the violin when she was young. Herbert William was of German and English origin, and Vera Geoffrey Palmer of British origin. She only became Jane Mansfield when she married her first husband, John Mansfield, in May 1950. Before she made it as a Hollywood star, she worked at a number of odd jobs, including as a candy girl at a cinema. She loved to perform and reportedly wanted to be a Hollywood star like Shirley Temple. Tragedy struck when Jane was three, when her father suddenly died of a heart attack. Three years later, her mother remarried, and she and her mother moved to Dallas, Texas, buying a small home where she had violin concerts in the driveway of their home. A naive and trusting child, Jane's innocence often resulted in touching anecdotes. Once Jane's Sunday school teacher told the children that God was always with them. That night, Jane fell out of bed several times, making room for God. When Jane learned that a family living down the street had fallen on hard times, she helped them out in whatever way possible. Disturbed because their little girl had no winter coat, Jane traded her jacket to the girl in exchange for an old baby bottle. Jane's parents were upset, but she never regretted the trade. Though Jane's kind heart enabled her to touch the lives of many, it made her extremely vulnerable. She attended the University of Dallas and participated in little theatre productions. Jane Mansfield was not a dumb blonde. Jane was said to have an exceptionally high IQ, though she wasn't all that successful in school. It's strange how someone that isn't all that great in school can have an IQ that outstrips most of those around them. Her IQ was reportedly 163. Of course, this is entirely possible since some of the smartest people in the world have bombed out of one class or another, but still understand things about this world that elude others. IQ is kind of a hard way to gauge intelligence since the real-world applications are best seen through experience rather than statistical data. 
Jane was fluent in five languages. Blondes tend to get a bad reputation thanks to those among them that are in fact vapid bubbleheads. But Jane was anything but. Being able to speak two languages is impressive enough, but being able to keep five languages in her repertoire and use them when it is necessary and not confuse them with one another is something else. Mansfield quickly turned herself into a sex symbol and people failed to see her as anything else. She was extremely intelligent and had raw talent, but that was overshadowed by her skimpy outfits and tabloid stories. At the age of 16, she married a man five years her senior named Paul Mansfield. Nowadays, it's not so scandalous when people have children out of wedlock, although some people still get judged for it. Attitudes have changed massively over the years. Unfortunately, views weren't quite so progressive back in 1950. That's why Jane kept quiet about her bun in the oven when she tied the knot with Paul Mansfield. She was already three months pregnant by that point, but thankfully no one had clocked it. If they had, she would have been judged not only for the pregnancy, but for being a mom at 17. Marrying Paul should have been the happiest day of Jane's life. Unfortunately, it appears that her husband wasn't the greatest spouse on the planet. He was incredibly controlling, to the point that he kept an eye on everything that his wife did. It seemed there was nothing that Mansfield could keep a secret, with Paul even discovering her secret admission to the Miss California pageant. However, that didn't stop the actress from reportedly getting intimate with a variety of other men. The sex symbol was allegedly intimately involved with numerous men, including Robert and President John F. Kennedy. She simply had an insatiable appetite. Jane Mansfield rose to fame during the 50s, and one of her trademarks was her gorgeous blonde curls. But as a matter of fact, her real hair colour was dark brown. During the Marilyn Monroe era, which Jane lived under, blonde was the more trendy hair colour, so most likely Jane felt that she had to pretend to be blonde to land jobs. If it's one thing this actress knew, it was to work publicity stunts to her advantage, and her hair colour was one of them. Jane flourished in Hollywood. She took a job at a movie theatre, but was soon accepting work as a model. Jean Lester, a well-known photographer, recalled her first professional shoot for General Electric. Jane was one of the girls I used. She was way over to the left side of the picture. General Electric notified me that they had to cut her out of the picture because she looked too sexy for 1954 viewers. Hollywood publicity agent Jim Byron saw her potential. Jane had a star quality, he said. She was very much like a raw gem. During Christmas, they decided Jane would visit newspapers and provide the overworked reporters with cheer in the form of a spirited hug and kiss. Her appearances were a hit, and Jane's picture was in newspapers all over the country. Later, in a red bikini, it became obvious to everyone that she had control of the spotlight. Headlines from that weekend announced, Jane outpoints Jane. That same year, after starring in the Broadway hit Will Success Spoil Rock Hunter, the headlines read, Jane signs studio contract with Fox. Jane was on her way to becoming a celebrity when she attended a Mae West performance at the Latin Quarter. After the show, Jane was also on her way to falling in love with 1956 Mr. Universe, Mickey Hargitay who was working as one of May's muscle men in the show. As their relationship developed, May became irate at the loss of Mickey's affections and called a press conference where she ordered him to denounce his relationship with Jane. Her plan backfired. Instead of reading the scripted statement, Mickey said, Janie and I are very much in love and we have seriously discussed marriage plans in the future. On January 13, 1958, amid family, friends and a flurry of press in Palos Verde, California, the pair married. Theirs was very much a storybook love, of which Jane later said, We were into something so beautiful. Mickey and I had a grasp of life that most people never know anything about. Both Jane and Mickey loved children and were ecstatic each time Jane became pregnant. The couple had three children together, Miklos, Zoltan and Mariska, whom they regularly brought on location for performances. 
We take our children everywhere we go. I don't believe in having them and then leaving them to someone else to bring up. Meanwhile, Jane's career had continued to prosper. In 1956, she starred in The Girl Can't Help It, a successful film that satisfied the public's demand for anything rock and roll related. When she earned the lead in The Wayward Bus, based on John Steinbeck's best-selling novel, Jane captured the persona of her character and the critics took notice. Fox then placed her in Kiss Them For Me alongside Cary Grant, whom she found to be one of the most marvellous men I've ever met. She had been asked to appear in nightly performances at the Tropicana where she sang, danced and joked with the audience and could not refuse the offer of $25,000 a week. Jane loved being able to personally interact with her fans, and the Tropicana loved the crowd she drew. Her performance brought in a packed house every night. It was the beginning of a long-standing, highly successful nightclub career for Jane. Several years later, she returned to Las Vegas, this time at the Dunes Hotel, where her weekly salary was raised to $35,000. Ultimately, Jane juggled a career that encompassed almost every media facet. Unfortunately, as so often happens in Hollywood, Jane and Mickey's relationship had become strained. They decided to divorce in August 1964, but always remained good friends. In 1967, Jane's life was still moving at full speed. I will never be satisfied, she said in an interview. Life is one constant search for betterment for me. Her time was split between a southern nightclub tour and the production of Single Room, Furnished, a drama that would become her last film. Jane Mansfield certainly left her mark on Hollywood before being taken away from the world far too soon. The actress knew she was destined for stardom since she was just a little girl and was willing to do whatever it took to make it in the cutthroat entertainment industry. It didn't take her long to figure out that sex sells and the bombshell started showing off her stunning figure to make a name for herself, and it worked. In fact, she was the first American actress to ever appear without clothes in a movie. While travelling from a nightclub in Biloxi, Mississippi, and 30 miles from New Orleans, to where she was to be on television the following day, she was killed instantly on Highway 90 in Slidell, Louisiana, in a car crash in the early hours of June 29, 1967, when the car in which she was riding slammed into the back of a semi-tractor trailer truck that had stopped due to a truck in front of the tractor trailer that was spraying for bugs. Her car went under the truck at nearly 80 miles per hour. Her boyfriend Samuel Brody and their driver Ronnie Harrison were also killed. The damage to the car was so bad that the engine was twisted sideways. She was not, however, decapitated, as had long been misreported. She was 34 years old. The world was stunned. Jane's personality was so vibrant, her career so vivacious, that it was impossible to believe she was gone. Jane was always searching for something better. She was a woman that knew her value to people and built upon that as much as she could. And yet she was always looking to better her situation and find the next big thing in her life to accomplish. She was a legend in her time, and unfortunately, some legends burn out too fast. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Jane Mansfield? She was one of the most beautiful women in the 50s, who was just gone too early.